there are a couple different ways to leave the witnesses. Um, you can get kicked out, uh, or you can leave. And both of those have two things. Uh, the X Reddit lingo is uh, physically in, mentally out, or some combination thereof. So if you're kicked out, you are physically out, and then you are mentally in or mentally out. If you are disfellowshipped uh, and still believe you are pomy, which is one of the worst outcomes because uh, you think that any day now, the main man Jesus is going to show up for uh, round two, this time with lightning, and kill you. So that's a tough way to live, constantly thinking that you're going to get zapped. Um, but there are people who voluntarily leave and are still pomy. So I wanted to talk about two of my cousins who are siblings and what happened there. And this is kind of a warning to people who are in relationships uh, with witnesses or ex-witnesses, people who themselves were never involved in the cult, um, because I'm going to stop wobbling my phone around. Ah, crap. Maybe I just edit that out. Yeah. Because uh, this, is, this is a warning, more or less, to the people who are in a relationship with a, with a former witness who has not yet fully woken up because it is a, it's a time bomb waiting to happen. Uh, I mentioned my cousin briefly in another video. We can call him N. Um, he left the witnesses because he's gay and couldn't handle it anymore. Couldn't handle lying and the homophobia. It's really bad uh, to be constantly told that you are uh, uh, an abomination. It's rough. Um, so he still believes, we haven't talked about apostate things. Um, he's still obviously a little uncomfortable about talking about that. Um, but he has basically just decided to ignore religion and live his life. Date guys, have fun. So. I hope he wakes up, and I hope he's not, you know, laying there at night waiting for fireballs to kill him and whoever he's dating. It's rough. Um, a better case scenario, but like anyone in a relationship with him, if he decides, oh, the stress of me dying, being judged by God is too much, then their relationship will be over instantaneously. And now we will get to his sister and how that exact sort of thing happened uh, with her. So Kay uh, has a uh, semi 98% non-witness mother. She was around the witnesses, but never like fully indoctrinated. So she believes some things. Kay went to live. Uh, Kay had been living with her witness side of her family, and uh, she was depressed, and things were not great, and she left to go back and live with her non-witness family, and she was there for several months. Uh, was dating a non-witness guy, uh, smoking pot, uh, you know, being a normal adult woman in her 20s. Uh, she had sex with this guy, and that snapped the cult mind back in place. So she immediately without explaining to him, I'm glossing over some of the details, but uh, without explaining to him, just left the next day, came back uh, to her witness side of the family with 
no explanation to him on the other side of the country, just zoop, gone. Um, I was awake at this point, but my wife was not. And so we had her over, she needed some people to talk to, and I deeply regret not talking to them at this moment because, ah, uh, here's what happened to Kay. So she comes over and talks about how uh, her brother had left at this point. And uh, she has another brother who is also not a witness, who has several kids. And uh, she was saying how, I don't want to live forever in the paradise if the people I love aren't going to be there. Um, I'd rather have one life with them than live forever with these people gone. I was like, that's a good sign. It's a very good sign. And the reason she came back was not, oh no, I have saddened the heart of Jehovah. Um, it was, I don't want to lose the rest of my family and friends. This is a cost-benefit thing. She's not going to lose her worldly friends if she comes back and becomes super witness lady. But if she doesn't come back, she will lose the witness half of her family. So, uh, I thought she was going to wake up. She was like, this close. So, so, so close. But she never had any doubts, it seems, or not enough. Because the elders... Uh, had a shepherding calls with her and she was forgiven. Jehovah forgave her. And so this girl who was talking about how how fun sex was uh, first experience. Oh boy. Uh, how much she did not like spending time with her witness family because uh, they're awfully judgy. Hard to be around. Hard to talk to. Love my family. Um but uh, being a witness causes problems. So she goes from this, I don't want to be in the paradise if the people I love aren't there, to saying that she knew, she writes a long letter uh, of equal parts guilt and um, kind of blaming, kind of question. I, I knew that you were spiritually sick when I talked to you. Bitch, no. That is not what you said. I came back because of my love for Jehovah. You never mentioned God once. Don't lie to me. You came back because you didn't want to lose the big chunk of your family. You can lie to yourself, but you can't lie to me. I was there. <laughs> um, and now she's a super zealot cut us out of her life. We were very, like me and my wife, were very close friends. She was over at our house all the time. I uh, haven't talked to her in months and months and months and months and months. Um, and the last thing she sent was a very super zealous, culty email. And the guy that she's dating, gone. Uh, don't know that she ever even explained why she left. Just vanished like a day later. So moral of these two stories is if you are dating a person who is a former witness you need to make sure that they don't believe anymore. Because if you are doing if you are not a witness, then you are uh, not living up to their standards and might get them killed with fireballs. And even if they are doing things that witnesses would never, ever do, and saying things that witnesses would never, ever say, like the things my cousin Kay said, uh, having sex, smoking pot, you know, Things the witnesses aren't supposed to do. Doesn't mean you've woken up. She did all these things, and her brother did all these things, despite what they believed. Uh, so you need to confirm 
that they don't believe anymore. Actions are not enough because that trigger happened where the guilt kicked in. And she immediately reverted from a normal person to her cult persona. And now I'm worried, like, I feel really guilty that I didn't talk to her at that moment because I was afraid I was going to blow my cover. I was like, do I want to risk it now? There's two people here that might believe, and I'm a little scared of springing it on both of them. And now I wish I'd taken the chance because I don't know if it's too late. If she's been so thoroughly reindoctrinated that she might not snap out of it. I hope she will. But she is literally a completely different person. And she would agree and be happy to agree. That, oh, that was the worldly me. This is the real me. Cult eyes. You'll notice the cult eyes if you look for it. The kind of blank, blank uh, vacant stare. I can't do it right. But you'll notice it. There, there's, there's something missing behind the eyes. It's very sad to see. So yeah, if you're dating a witness, make sure they are really awake and there's no lingering things in the back of their head because otherwise there is a good chance that you are, that your relationship is a time bomb. And uh, it's really sad. It's really sad. You see this come up fairly regularly in the XJW subreddit of people saying like, I'm dating a witness and they're awesome and they're a great person and I love them and now they're starting to get back into the cult and what do I do? Honestly, there might not be much you can do besides either join the cult, which I do not advise. That is a, I mean, it's your choice, but it's a terrible idea. Uh, be like asking if you want to get a lobotomy. It's a really, it's a really, you could do it, but you won't be happy. Uh, it's a really, really bad idea. Or you can end the relationship. So there's no good answer. It's very sad. So wake them up, make sure that they don't believe. Uh, or run for it, unfortunately. Anyway, being Pomey is awful, and uh, I hope they both wake up. We'll see, hopefully. Uh, hope you're having a great night. Uh, I miss them, I love them, but you know, still, couldn't be happier, it's great. Life is great. Love my wife, love my kids, got some cool ass friends. Things are good. So, have a good one. <laughs>